Good evening, Red Deer. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Tara Shad, and I'm the Public Information Officer with the City of Red Deer's Emergency Operations Center. Tonight, we will provide you with a briefing with Mayor Tara Beer, as well as Emergency Operations Director Karen Webb, followed by some questions from our local media and potentially a few of our public questions as well. Mayor Tara Beer. Good evening, my fellow Red Deerians and Central Albertans. Thank you for joining us today for this Facebook Live conference uh, to update on the efforts of our local operation, emergency operations center. The city of Red Deer continues to closely monitor and respond to the COVID-19 situation, and we are continuously adjusting our local response in accordance with federal and provincial protocols as well as assessing the needs specific to our community of Red Deer. As part of her update today, Dr. Hinshaw confirmed 41 new cases of COVID-19 in Alberta, and this growing number obviously continues to be a concern for us at the City of Red Deer. The mapping on the AHS website indicates 17 cases in the central zone and 9 cases in Red Deer. I will note that Red Deer is included within the central zone. The city of Red Deer remains in a state of local emergency, and we encourage you to vid visit Alberta Health's website for the latest and most up-to-date health information and information regarding provincial restrictions. And so certainly uh, we emphasize uh, that if you have questions about the number of, of cases and the location of those cases, to please go on that Alberta Health website uh, as the health authority has all of that specific information. The City of Red Deer continues to explore all options related to necessary measures that we can take to protect the health, social, and economic wellness of our local citizens, business, and our community as a whole. The health and safety of our citizens is our priority. And I've said it before, but I will continue to say it, that virus mitigation continues to be our primary focus. This is the primary driver for all of the decisions being made by the City of Red Deer Emergency Operations Center. With this in mind, I share with you today that over the weekend and today, we have and are taking the following additional measures into all of the responsive measures that we've announced in previous community briefings. As noted on the weekend, there have been adjustments to the, to the delivery rather of conventional transit services with reduced frequency from 30 minutes to one hour. I will note that usage both on conventional transit, transit and specialized transit are substantially down. Specialized transit will continue, otherwise known as the action bus, will continue for central trips as well. I will say that our emergency operations center is also looking into dial -a bus options. Uh, we know that transit, the transit situation is a bit fluid right now, uh, but our emergency operations are looking into dial -a bus uh, options uh, in order to make sure that we are keeping our public safe, but that we also have sufficient service provision in our new normal. So further updates will be forthcoming on that as our emergency operations center has uh, specific information and updates to share. I also want to share with you that with the information that the virus can be transmitted from playground surfaces, the Emergency Operations Center has made the difficult decision to close all playgrounds within the city. We know that this is not easy to hear as the weather is warming and we know that our citizens are home with children needing exercise and activity. We know, and the Emergency Operations Center has emphasized, that we are doing the right thing to stop the spread of COVID-19 here in Red Deer. But unfortunately, the right thing is not always the popular or easy thing to do. But right now, we are ahead of the curve in Red Deer, and we want it to stay that way. Emergency Operations has therefore made this decision in the health and safety interest of our most youngest citizens. The city endeavors to keep our much loved community trails, pathways, and open, and open parks spaces open. 
And our ability to do that will be directly linked to our citizens' cohesion and respect to social distancing practices. We absolutely implore our citizens to ensure that you are staying home if you are ill, when you are ill, and if you are showing symptoms. We ask our citizens to adhere to social distancing protocols when you are out for a walk in your neighborhood or using our open parks and trail system. The social distancing, in other words, keeping others at an arm length, if, is absolutely critical if we want to ensure that we continue to keep these assets in our city available throughout this evolving situation, especially as we head into warmer temperatures. So I will reiterate, our beloved trails, pathways, and open spaces, with the exception of playgrounds, continue to remain open. But in order for emergency operations to be able to keep it this way, we absolutely need our citizens to engage in social distancing. I also want to take some time tonight to address the impact that this plan pandemic is having on our local entrepreneurs and businesses. We know that this global crisis and local state of emergency continues to have an impact on you as well as the city. In looking at and we are looking at how we can support business in both the short term and the medium term. And we will look to economic recovery in the long term. However, we also encourage businesses that are able to remain open under the provincial protocols to practice social distancing at your place of business and to limit or stagger the number of people visiting your businesses, whether you're an essential business or a non-essential business. Uh, we know that social distancing is absolutely imperative uh, as a critical measure. Last week I mentioned uh, that we are actively looking and we have fielded numerous community questions with respect to property tax and potential property tax deferral. I will say that we have a scheduled conversation tomorrow with Municipal Affairs uh, regarding the provincial direction on property taxes and so we will hopefully have further information later in the week for the people of our community. Uh, so again, I know that that's uh, an, an issue of particular interest to our citizens because of the financial impact and it is still on the table. However, there's a lot of logistics with respect to that and we're in active conversation with the province. So we hope to have briefing on that in the coming days. Community friends, together we can prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Red Deer. And together, I am confident that we will get through this. We genuinely thank each and every one of you in our community who are doing your, your part to help prevent the spread and for everything that you are all doing to help our community get through this together. In alignment with the messaging from Alberta Health Services, the mechanism and frequency of our daily updates may change going forward. The City of Red Deer will continue to update you through our social media channel, cha channels rather, on our website and through videos. However, we will ass assess the need uh, for briefings on a daily basis. And especially we will provide briefings when we take consideration of new federal, provincial and local measures being taken that are absolutely imperative for you to be informed of. Please be sure to continue to follow the websites made available by the federal and provincial orders of government, the City of Red Deer website, as well as Facebook and Twitter uh, through the City of Red Deer's channels for the most update information. As always, if you have questions, our call center is ready to help. Our City of Red Deer staff are there from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. and you can call them at 403-342-8111. Their focus is on municipal operations and potential impacts that that may have on you and your loved ones, uh, but they will also do their best to route you to provincial and federal governments uh, with respect to the questions that you have there as well. So thank you very much, Red Deer, for tuning in, and I look forward to your questions. I'll now invite UOC Director Karen Mann to offer some comment around logistics and this city's municipal response. Good evening, Red Deer. Once again, I'm here to bring you information from the City of Red Deer's Emergency Operations Centre. 
The City of Red Deer's Emergency Operations Center remains committed and steadfast in our delivery of the essential services that you, our residents, need. For this reason, we continue to take all necessary steps to protect our residents and our staff. For health-related information, we continue to urge citizens to visit www.ahs.ca for health-related questions. At the City of Red Deer, we continue to update our website at reddeer.ca as it pertains specifically to our municipal response. Additionally, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., the City of Red Deer Call Center remains open to serve you and answer your questions. As Mayor Mayor highlighted, highlighted to you just now, we are taking measures in the um, next couple of days to close our playgrounds and fitness parks across the city. In the coming days, you'll start to see increasing signage and cordoned off areas in and around our playground structures. Please avoid these areas. As a parent, I know that this is very difficult. Um, as the mayor mentioned, the weather is getting warmer and our kids are home. With the high number of touch points and the limited availability to ensure proper cleaning and hand sanitization in these locations, this important but difficult measure was necessary to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our community. In addition to the steps related to playgrounds, we, are, we also did make some changes to our conventional transit service uh, to respond to this ongoing situation. Originally, as we reported through the weekend, we adjusted conventional transit service to an hourly service beginning at 7.45 in the morning. Based on your feedback, we are adjusting this service to begin at 6.45 beginning tomorrow. This will allow our residents to continue to get to work and to the places uh, for medical appointments that they require, but we are urging our residents to only use transit uh, services for absolutely essential purposes. I um, just one correction the 645 service will begin on Wednesday my apologies uh, 645 hourly service on conventional transit will begin on Wednesday this will allow us to serve you better and was a direct response to the feedback we received from you on our conventional transit changes for this I want to thank our residents for providing us with the feedback that we need in order to make decisions that allow us all to get through the situation together. As we move forward, in addition to um, the City of Red Deer's measures that we're taking on transit and in um, our, our playgrounds, we do continue to absolutely stress the importance to our residents of social distancing. This is not the time to have gatherings. This is not the time to be out and having playdates. Unfortunately, this is the time to stay home and socially distance from others. This is in the interest of all Red Deerians. And we, as the mayor said, we continue to implore you to take this uh, direction from the Chief Medical Officer of Health as seriously as we are. Um, it's, it's how we will keep each other healthy and safe as we move forward. Um, so social distancing remains one of our priority messages, hand washing and staying home. If you have any questions for the City of Red Deer, as I've mentioned, we are available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Friday, sorry, to us seven days a week at the call center 403-342-8111 or 24 hours a day at reddeer.ca. For health-related information, please continue to visit Alberta Health Services at ahs.ca slash COVID. With that, we're open to questions. So we are going to take a few questions from our public Facebook feed tonight, followed up by some media questions. One of the questions we've received a number of times this evening relates to whether or not our dog parks are also closed or if they remain open for business. Mayor Beer. Uh, thank you, that's a great question. Uh, so at this time, the dog parks do remain open. The decision taken by emergency operations with respect to playground structures was for the fact that playground structures have a lot of touch points uh, and it's very difficult to monitor for little kids, uh, especially uh, the touch points uh, and then potentially uh, not washing their hands or touching their face uh, or, the, or, or their mouths uh, while on the or immediately after the playground structures. 
I would like to come back uh, to the parks in general. So playground structures are closed. However, trails, open park spaces uh, in general, the dog parks would be classified as open park space uh, and, and open neighborhood pathways remain open. But I would emphasize, please Red Deer, the Emergency Operations Center is imploring to engage in social distancing. Obviously, as we head into warmer months uh, and with limited uh, recreation and social options available uh, to people, it, we really do desire to continue to keep open parks and trails and pathways open. Having said that, if citizens do not engage in social distancing and it's putting other people in our community at risk, emergency operations will have to revisit it. So we are giving our citizens agency here uh, and we really implore our citizens to please do your part to keep the dog parks open, uh, open park system, trails and pathways open by engaging in social distancing in a very consistent manner so that we have this one very limited option available to us uh, in the coming weeks and potentially months. Thank you, Mayor Bear. Another question that we've received a number of times through our feed is related to private business and why private businesses remain open at this time and when we anticipate closure of non-essential businesses. Mayor Bear. Thank you. I will lead off on this one and then I'll defer to Director Mann in case there's any additions to that. Uh, so the City of Red Deer has taken the lead. This, the opening and closures of businesses has been predominantly determined by the provincial government. Uh, so the provincial government has very stringent or very uh, specific classifications about what is an essential business and a non-essential business. And essential doesn't mean important uh, overall, but essential means in an emergency situation, what are the types of businesses that, that our communities and our citizens need in order uh, to be able to survive and engage in uh, pa the pandemic measures? The provincial government right now has closed certain types of businesses, and there are some currently non-essential businesses that remain open. I will say it's a bit confusing uh, for the public. So an example of an essential business, uh, I believe the Premier has spoken about grocery stores and banks uh, as being essential types of businesses. So uh, I believe that the plan will be for those to remain open. So then the question is non-essential businesses. Uh, I think it's confusing for our public right now because there are some non-essential businesses where a specific company has decided to close on their own accord. So there is a, a bit of a mixed response in terms of non-essential businesses. Unless the provincial government has declared that a certain suite of non-essential businesses must be closed, sometimes those private businesses have opted uh, for their own business decisions. They have opted to close their doors temporarily. But for those that are still allowed to remain open, that are non-essential businesses, uh, they, they, it is not business as usual. Those specific businesses must engage in social distancing. And I will say that there are other provinces uh, that have gone the route of closing non-essential businesses. Alberta has not yet taken that track, but that will be a call of the provincial government and we will be closely watching that. And again, the city will come into complete alignment with whichever the province decides on that. So I'll come to Karen if there's anything further. Okay. Director Mann indicated that uh, Mayor Beer covered that question off. So we will um, answer one last public question and that's related to property tax and what, if anything, is the city doing about property taxes? Mayor Beer. Obviously the focus of the city is virus mitigation, mitigation as we focus on the public health and safety measures uh, that are necessary for the safety of all of our citizens. But we are also doing our part uh, to, for the economic safety and security uh, because we know with uh, temporary closures across the board, we know that our citizens are deeply concerned. Uh, so I will say the federal and provincial governments have announced their specific uh, economic relief packages uh, that we are hoping that local citizens and businesses uh, and families can benefit from. The City of Red Deer, uh, I've, I've addressed it in my formal remarks. We've already uh, taken a number of decisions uh, 
with respect to a deferral of utility payments, uh, cutting uh, the cancellation of parking payments uh, in the short term as ways of providing economic relief uh, to the people of our community. With respect to property taxes, again, we're waiting for a cue from the provincial government. And as noted in my formal remarks, we have uh, a discussion with Municipal Affairs tomorrow. We are hoping uh, that that will help us have a clearer understanding of the pro province's intention regarding property taxes. We know that there's a lot of information uh, that, that our community uh, is seeing. And so we just want to come into alignment with the provincial message and we will be considering property tax uh, options. Uh, I would, if, if property tax uh, response in some form wasn't on the table, I would be honest and indicate that right now. But I will say uh, we are taking a very serious look at it. We just don't have all the answers yet, but we will hopefully sometime this week. Uh, and again, uh, there is, it is a bit complex because property taxes have a provincial requisition to it or a provincial component and a municipal component. So about two thirds of your property tax bill is municipal taxes and the remaining approximate one third is, is provincial uh, requisition on property taxes. So it's imperative that we work in close alignment with the provincial government in making a decision on this. And again, it's on the table. I, I give you my personal word on that, but we just don't have uh, the specific answers on that today, but we're hoping we will by the end of the week. With that, we'll move to a couple of questions from our local media. We have Josh Hall from RD News now on the line. Hey Josh, do you have any questions for us? I do have one question for you right now. Uh, thank you. Um, we've been hearing a lot about possible enforcement options coming in uh, to deter people from social distance, uh, to deter people from not social distancing, I guess. Um, and now that uh, there's a ban on using playgrounds, are there any measures that the city can take to uh, actually enforce that if people are seen uh, using the playgrounds and if people see people using the playgrounds, who should they report that to? Thank you, Josh. I'll pass that to Emergency Management Director Karen Mann. Good evening. Thanks for the question. So in relation to enforcement options, first and foremost, our goal is to um, compel compliance through information. So our goal is to communicate effectively with our residents and get them to understand why these actions are being taken. And that's why we come to you each evening and speak to you about the decisions that are being made from the Emergency Operations Centre. With that being said, decisions that are um, made by the provincial government, so the closure of, say, casinos or uh, businesses hosting over 50 people, those would be under the public health state of emergency and the compliance around that falls under environmental public health. So it's a branch of Alberta Health Services and there is an option for residents who have questions or concerns about environmental uh, public health um, issues in our community to contact uh, them directly. So we will have that information available to you. I don't have the number offhand, but environmental public health does have a contact number that is available to residents who have questions about um, closures that were enacted by the provincial government. On the municipal side, uh, the City of Bridger is considering enforcement options around any closures that we implement. So some closures, they are easy to um, enforce because they're buildings, such as rec facilities, we lock the doors and they're closed. Things like playgrounds re rely a lot more on um, community compliance and um, residents encouraging each other to follow the direction that has been provided. So in terms of formal enforcement options, we are considering what is available to us. However, at this point, the enforcement lies primarily with people choosing to do the right thing in the name of public health and safety. Thank you. Josh, do you have a follow-up? No, I don't. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. We had another caller join us. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name. If you can tell us where you're from and if you have a question for us tonight. Uh, yeah, Lana Michelin, from the Director Advocate, and I do have one question. Go ahead, Lana. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, 
You know, in light of the fact that recreational facilities are closed and now playgrounds are closed, uh, one of the city councillors had said we have to start telling people what they can do instead of just what they can't do. Um, are, is there any thought that uh, people who plan uh, recreational programming could um, maybe put some kind of activities or ideas online for uh, you know parents who are getting a little bit desperate uh, to entertain their children? Um, I don't know, geocaching or something else that doesn't involve like a ton of other people, you know, might be an idea, but I just thought with, uh, I would ask whether there are any thoughts to this kind of thing. Absolutely, Lana. I will pass that to Mayor Veer for initial comments. Okay. Thanks for the question, Lana. I will, uh, I will lead off on this question and then I will defer to Director Mann for specifics on it. Uh, as I've noted on numerous occasions, our primary focus right now is virus mitigation. And so unfortunately, the focus, uh, it's the very unfortunate but necessary focus, is uh, with respect to restrictions. And it's absolutely imperative that we settle into our new normal and engage in uh, social distancing. Uh, we certainly know that the parks closure will have significant impact uh, on, on particularly our younger population. Uh, there is a, a Facebook page uh, that's been established called Red Deer Active at Home uh, that talks about some of the things that people can do uh, to engage kids and youth in particular, uh, but certainly it affects, it affects people in all ages and stages of life uh, because this is a new normal for all of us. Uh, I, I do think that as time goes on, uh, there will be potentially uh, more creative options that we can look for as a community, uh, but the primary focus right now of emergency operations is virus mitigation and public health and safety. Uh, and the second area of focus is, is with respect to mitigating the significant economic consequences that the pandemic is having on households and businesses. Uh, and thirdly, looking ahead, uh, given the fact that this is the new reality uh, that we will all need to settle into, uh, we will uh, be looking at specific options that are safe options uh, to uh, engage in uh, while we go through these restrictions. And I'll come to Director Mann for specifics on that. Thank you, Mayor Beer, and I'm happy to provide some additional information to answer the question, what can Red Deerians do? Um, as we spoke earlier, while playgrounds are being closed due to their high number of surfaces and touch points and the challenges that exist at playgrounds with uh, providing access to hand washing and hand sanitization, um, green spaces in communities do remain open, as do our trails and our dog parks. As Mayor Veer has already said, as long as people are able to maintain safe social distancing, these, um, these spaces will remain open. And there are a lot of options for Red Deerians to get out in these spaces and be active with their families or alone. Biking, running, and walking are some great examples. Um, the other example was Red Deer Active at Home. It's a great uh, Facebook page that has ideas not only about fitness, but also cultural activities, things to do with your kids, ways to connect in your community while social, socially distancing, but not becoming socially isolated. So there's lots of great ideas posted on there by the city with our community partners. And um, it's all in the name of ensuring people remain connected to community, uh, that we're taking care of each other and that we're maintaining our mental health and well-being through the long stretch here. And then finally, uh, for people who have access to decks, patios, yards, driveways, um, we're seeing people provide some creative ideas about how to use those spaces uh, with their kids and create some unique and fun uh, things to do within their smaller, um, their smaller areas. And we continue to look forward to connecting with Red Deerians through this ongoing situation to find out how you're staying connected and how you're staying active. Thank you. Lana, do you have a follow-up? No, that's good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight, Red Deer. We just want to remind you that our call center is open if you have questions. 403-342-8111. As the mayor has spoken to tonight, we will be modifying how we share this information with you, but we will continue to share information with you through videos, online, 
and through our social media accounts. So please um, go there to get any city response related information. Thank you, Red Deer.